We are live. So, uh, bear with me just two seconds. Let me just make sure that the stream is live. Uh, I'll check on my phone quickly. Apologies for this. Oh, no problem. Best way to do it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, uh, guys, today I'm joined by Christian uh, Daskalov, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, from uh, Open Source University uh, for a live uh, Ask Me Anything. Uh, so, before we kick this off, uh, Christian, tell me a little bit about yourself, man. Um, what's your position within uh, OS University and how did all of this, all of this come about? Yeah, thank, thanks. Well, uh, hey, Keith, uh, first of all, uh, let me start with uh, thanking you for organizing this AMA. It's always great to hear from the community, and it's always great to hear from uh, experts as you that uh, you have uh, discussed uh, hundreds of projects and all the feedback that comes back to us as questions, as ideas, is invaluable. So, um, starting with introducing myself, uh, I'm the project lead and one of the four co founders. I'm the only non-technical co-founder. My uh, background, apart from my colleagues uh, who are long-time software developers, uh, is in the field of economics. I uh, have uh, graduated in economics, and now I'm pursuing my PhD uh, in slightly different field, in the field of open source project governance. So it's quite hot because you know people are raising quite a lot of money to different crypto crowdfunding campaigns, and they have zero idea they have zero idea what to do with this money because they cannot govern their projects properly and it's very different from governing a classical startup because it is an open project and the community is what should be at the core of the center of the management and the overall governance of the directions for this project so i'm researching the key success factors behind governing an open source project and what i do in the in the Meanwhile, is I'm implementing all my findings and basically applying them on the open source university project uh, as a doctoral researcher at the Technical University of Sofia. Think of us as a spin-off academic project with quite a lot of um, commercial potential. Okay, so um, so tell me in a nutshell then um, what um, what open source university what, what your goal is for for this particular project. Yeah, well, our vision is that uh, we are providing uh, learners, and by learners, I mean both students and professional employees with a digital credentials passport on the blockchain. Uh, Why well, we use the blockchain? Because every uh, document or other form of recognition that you register in your credentials passport can be made immutable. Uh, it cannot be changed uh, or altered or uh, any source of fraud uh, basically cannot be uh, run on top of this transaction. And uh, it's not only that, but because of uh, technology itself, uh, every transaction of uh, information about who you are, your self-sovereign education and professional identity uh, becomes uh, credible and become trusted in an uh, untrusted environment. You no longer need uh, the institutions for companies to go to them and to run background checks and for these institutions to provide the documents. You own the documents about who you are, what you have accomplished. Uh, if you publish these documents in your credentials passport and they are authenticated by the issuer, then it really it gets a lot of time, it gets a lot of effort on background checks. And most importantly, it enables you to be mobile, to be up to date, to be a few, I would say, uh, runs ahead of the competition on the job marketplace. This is what we do. We create this credentials passport. Uh, OS University is basically the platform that provides this credentials passport as a service to every user that is out there around the world. And around this credentials passport, we also create a, a couple of uh, great additional features, such as a decentralized educational marketplace. So you can start the journey, not at the end, right at the uh, authentication of your accomplishment, but actually start the journey uh, by looking for high quality uh, education opportunities, enrolling in them, and then upon accomplishment, registering your accomplishment. Yeah, more or less in a nutshell, that's about what your university stands for and what we try to achieve. Right then, so uh, let's um, let's get this all in in, in kind of uh, my language, in like because uh, you what you I'm hearing what you're saying. But you can tell you're deep in the project and talking about all the all the parts that um, are obviously important. Of course. Yeah. So, 
for me as an individual, there's one part that I connected with um, when I reviewed, like, obviously reviewed you this morning, um, and um, the, the job marketplace side of things. That I completely understand that. You know, that's, um, we see you know, the rise of prevalence of um, online job boards and things like that with Monster.com, and then as, as things have pre progressed, yeah. we've got like LinkedIn. So I, I can kind of see, I can see that side. On the actual university side, um, explain to me who is going to be kind of, or on the educational side, uh, what's, uh, how, how's that going to yeah. work? I mean, is it going to be yeah. like distance learning? So like uh, in the UK, for example, we've got the Open University where you can, you can do a degree. Yeah, yeah, of distance. course. Yeah. Well, is, is it a similar sort of principle? But, and then those qualifications are, locked, are just registered on the blockchain? So talk, talk me through it. So let's say that I'm in a yeah, job. Yeah, 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 sure. sure. How, do I, how do you help me? Yeah, well, it's uh, now let me stick for a second at the job marketplace side because it's also important. You know, we are not creating a competitive project to LinkedIn. This would be nonsense. This would be outrageous because, you know, uh, we, we are a, a dedicated team of uh, software developers and researchers, but we are definitely not LinkedIn. What you would be able to do with our help is basically uh, make your LinkedIn account bulletproof. So uh, whatever you feed into your LinkedIn account in terms of educational and professional identity, um, I would say statements. If you feed these statements through a simple API integration, this would be possible to feed them from our system into your LinkedIn profile. You will see that this is authenticated by OS University, which would mean that instantly you boost your credibility because it is authenticated by OS University. This means that whatever you claim on your LinkedIn profile is 100% truth, which means that recruiters, again, we're not competing, we're not disrupting the recruitment industry. We are helping rec recruiters recruit smarter. We actually have uh, one of our official partners is the leading number one company for recruitment in Bulgaria, uh, Job Tiger, with more than 20 years on the market. So we know what their problem are, uh, what their problems are, and we are trying to tackle these problems with our technology. We're not trying to substitute them. So that's about all on the job marketplace side. Now on the academic side, I have one very good resource which I want to share with uh, all, all the viewers of the channel. It is actually the book, the book on blockchain in education. It's not the first book, not only the first book. It's literally the only book. We wrote it, the book on the application of blockchain in education. It is published. Uh, it, you can uh, buy it through Amazon, but actually I'm a fan of Open Science, so it's also published uh, free of charge. You can download it from our site at os.university slash book, and you can check all the research and how our project applied to academia. In a nutshell, if I need to uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, try to conclude it right now, it is about mobility of acquired learning and skills. It, it doesn't matter if this learning is online or offline. You record every bit and piece of learning that you acquire, and then you will be able to basically switch from different uh, source, uh, educational source providers from different universities. It's about credit mobility in higher education. Uh, currently, you can, for example, have a semester in another university, or you can complete a MOOC. But actually, uh, you need to, if someone wants information about it, it is, you know, uh, you need to go to the provider of uh, the education that you have acquired so far. You need paper transcripts. You need weeks, if not months. I have done three exchanges in different countries as part of my doctoral studies. One week at least before every exchange, I prepare documentations, what I have acquired so far in the previous university. What well, basically all this university will help universities achieve, like the classical accredited universities, is full instant credit mobility. I'm a learner, I decide to switch the next semester, I go to the new university, I give my credentials, passport address, they check it, they see what I have, I have accomplished, and they instantly basically adapt their learning plan or just provide it as it is to me and start from there. No need to, for a background check no need to connect with previous university through uh, formal uh, written uh, communication, no need for authentication through a third party, let's say a governmental entity. If it is there and it, if it is timestamped and basically authenticated by the provider of this learning that you have acquired, basically zero additional time and effort is being spent on validating something that has already been validated through OS University through the blockchain. As, it's as simple as this. We basically cut time and effort around uh, uh, educational 
uh, and professional credentials, um, mobility and, of course, exchange of information around it. So I've got a couple of questions from, from what you've been saying there. So first of all, um, I like the explanation about how you're not competing with LinkedIn, but you're creating this. Um, you'll be able to make a bulletproof LinkedIn profile. I like that idea. So essentially, what are you saying that, that with OS University, did you say that you'll, be, you'll have like APIs where you can link your OS University? Yeah, to exactly. To yeah, anything, yeah, to yeah. Any, any kind of thing similar to like LinkedIn. Any, any, any kind of integrations, for example, with the job marketplace that we're currently working to integrate, uh, again, the credentials passport into their, uh, I would say, uh, users' profiles. So basically, they will be able to apply for job opportunities by sharing uh, not only their CV, but also uh, a link to their credentials passport. And then if someone is interested in them as potential employees, they will instantly, the companies that are interested will instantly be able, of course, of course upon a handshake, sorry, a handshake with, uh, with uh, the, the job candidate, they will instantly be able to check, uh, you know, what he claims in, into his CV. Fantastic. So we will be able to do it with integrations from hundreds, if not thousands of different sources with, with whichever want to be a partner of ours. So if somebody did come up with, uh, let's say, a competitor to LinkedIn, it doesn't matter that they've already yeah. been to OS University to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. This is yeah. somewhere people will be going and putting a, a single place, a single place for everyone to put all of their credentials. So this is I mean, I'm yeah. Yeah. Exactly. an absolutely global market here as well, completely well, decentralized, <laughs> obviously. Um, how, how do you stop somebody? What's that? What's the procedure then for stopping somebody, stopping somebody from me from faking what I'm adding to yeah. um, to the blockchain with you guys? Well, basically, it, it's a two-sided process. Again, it's a decentralized uh, platform and a decentralized system. By the way, uh, if there are software developers that are looking right now, uh, I would definitely invite them all because uh, our code is all available on GitHub. You know, download it, install it, maybe deploy it somewhere on a private uh, installation of Ethereum if you are that deep into blockchain and and uh, run it, test it for yourself, do a couple of iterations, get back to us and bring your improvements. Uh, they are all welcome. So uh, the idea is that we have not uh, reinvented the world. We are just starting with the uh, alpha, alpha version and we, uh, I would say we are open to uh, new contributors to join the project. This is how a project uh, big as ours should be run. Now, to, to answer your question, this was, I would say, uh, just an invitation. I, I, I definitely wanted to put as part of today's AMA session. Uh, to, to answer your question, uh, how uh, fraud can actually be uh, defected? Well, uh, you not only register what you claim you have accomplished, you also need to basically uh, do a second transaction, which is uh, requesting authentication of what you're registering. And this authentication then happens on the side of the issuer of this particular credential. It can be a certificate, it can be a diploma, but it also can be a digital badge that someone provides. It can, it can be also corporate learning. And it's, uh, you know, now your next question, I suppose, would be then how are you going to make these people who are issuing credentials actually authenticate them to your system? Well, people do it all the time, right? Every day, universities are uh, bombarded with hundreds of requests for authentication of certain credentials from different, whether uh, recruiting companies or businesses directly or actually third-party background check providers. Every day, this happens in, in huge quality and uh, in huge quantity of requests. Now, if you do it through our system, if you only answer a, a request for authentication once per user, then no longer you would need to do a second uh, authentication because then your, I would say, um, uh, uh, authentication uh, being registered on the blockchain would would like for uh, you know, would, would uh, last for eternity. That's that's how we add efficiencies in the process. We are not okay. bypassing the need for someone to authenticate the issuer of this credential, but we are uh, putting a lot of efficiencies because he will not need to do it a second, third, or you know, hundred times sure. what, what, in um, a row. And what uh, about the instance in the instance that if so let's say somebody gets struck off? from a particular qualification or let's say yeah. that they have to have a CRB background check to work on a secure government site or something like that. Um, obviously, that is information that needs to be regularly updated. So what's your plan moving forward with this after ITO? I mean, are you going to try and integrate yourself, make it so that all universities and uh, 
know about you? Is that where the market not is only, going to go? Not only, after, not only after ICO, that's a good question. So uh, basically the ICO, we decided to do an ICO round because uh, at the end of the day, the transactions uh, on the system happen either either uh, through EDU, uh, our token that we created, or actually you can uh, pay for the, these transactions with Ether. But of course, if you pay with uh, with EDU, then uh, you you basically have also efficiencies simply because uh, it's a, a zero commission uh, token utility token that we provide. So we are, we are not charging you anything on top. We don't want to uh, I would say earn anything from from from, from the user. Uh, and actually, when I say we do not charge, it's decentralized system. So what we do is we write the smart contracts that run on the platform in a way that you are not being charged. Right? Now. Let me do the clearly the, the separation because it's a decentralized system, and there is not a particular, I would say, uh, a company that can do a vendor lock-in on on the development. We create it in a way that there is a zero percent commission. We, we don't charge you with anything. So using the new, you can uh, run these transactions yourself. Now, uh, having said that, we have already deployed this functionality with different partners. So we are not waiting for the ICO to, to end. We just decided to have an ICO round so that we can basically distribute our EDU tokens in a quite a fair way throughout the broad crypto community. And of course, distribute it uh, in a way that is, I would say, attractive for, for the, the crypto community because they're supporting our project in a, a relatively early stage, we are already three years in, in the making, uh, I mean, starting from research, so I will not say we started yesterday and we are really early uh, uh, stage startup. We have, we have traction, but we also have partners with whom we have already deployed the functionality uh, in their private environments uh, and uh, private builds. The next step would be to deploy it on the global uh, Ethereum blockchain and maybe in the future also, um, not maybe it's part of our roadmap, but it also depends on the other uh, blockchain uh, uh, companies that are out there integrated with other blockchains. We were discussing this with a couple of them and uh, our vision is that in, in 10 or 15 or 20 years time, every learner out there in the world will have a credentials uh, wallet or credentials passport you name it, I would actually be interested to uh, hear what the community have to say. Do they think that the credentials wallet makes more sense as a framing or a credentials passport? We use them interchangeably, but whatever the term we foresee the future of education, as in every learner has his credentials wallet or a passport, uh, and uh, no matter from, from which blockchain he is feeding the data, not necessarily from the Ethereum blockchain, we are able to feed this data into his credentials passport and we are able to do it with every university or a other form of professional or academic uh, education provider that is available. This is our, our vision for the future of education and we, we are working uh, to get there uh, like for at least the last 24 months now uh, quite actively. And we already have uh, uh, universities that are uh, on board of our vision. We already have, as I said, big job marketplaces. And right now we're discussing with also big providers of MOOCs. For example, with the MOOC, you can onboard one to 20 million users instantly. It's a huge scalability. And of course, the MOOC providers or the massive open online learning course providers also benefit because people simply don't trust in, in online education. And if we create this additional layer of trust by recording the accomplishment into a personal credentials passport, then we will boost the business of the MOOC platforms. I mean, we boost uh, engagement with such alternative forms of learning. And therefore, you know, there is a strong, very strong intent, is, uh, incentive to be a partner of OS University, which is, you know, the, the great uh, story. There is not a uh, zero sum game. Everybody wins from this platform. No one is being threatened. We're not, uh, you know, uh, trying to destroy or uh, uh, bring down entire industries. We're simply trying to create efficiencies all over the, the, the place. There's a quick question about efficiencies here, actually, before I open up the uh, questions to the, um, to, the, to the people watching. You mentioned that, um, uh, there's going to be zero fees. Um, yeah. But how do people move? How do people going to, are we, are you adapt on the, you're going to be adapt on the Ethereum network, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. if somebody wants to send the uh, EDU tokens backwards and forwards, they're going to need to pay gas. So yeah. how do you get around that? Because then it's not really. Free. Oh, uh, yeah. This is exactly what I said. We don't have uh, we don't have fees on top of uh, on top of basically the, the gas, which is not something that, that we. Uh, 
I would say, take as a project. It's something that Ethereum requires and something that actually uh, we are, uh, because our developers, my co-founders are also uh, into, into uh, the, uh, there, there is a program about uh, developers who receive early access to new features and therefore they can basically be part of, of uh, uh, the early stage development of what is next for the blockchain technology. So what we are, I would say, encouraging and working in the direction of, is, uh, of happening is that uh, eventually, and we will be there in a few years' time, if not, if not quite more uh, recently in, in the future, we will be there and uh, this uh, payment of guests will be able to basically be forwarded to someone. So we will be able to actually forward the payment of, of the guests to a university that is sponsoring basically your education to a, a company that is sponsoring your corporate development or actually to a nation government state. So you would be able to, to do this in the foreseeable future and we would be happy to be among the first that will leverage uh, this functionality. Uh, we, we also, you had a question, I, I watched uh, the great review that you, you made, uh, made for the project. There was a, there was a question of what is happening with the, the burning of tokens and the unsold tokens. Well, the unsold tokens as far, a part of the, uh, the, the crowd sale are actually going for a global fund with which we would basically subsidize learners from developing nations and through either governmental interventions or directly with their educational institutes to basically uh, embrace the credentials passport as a technology, as a piece of technology with a very small but sufficient amount of tokens in order to pay these exactly uh, fees uh, for uh, you know guests on the Ethereum blockchain. So we are not destroying any value. We are actually looking, and that's part of our white paper, we're looking to this global fund as a huge adoption mechanism to speed up the adoption of, uh, of our credentials passport. Awesome. Cool. Well, let's, um, let's open up uh, some of the questions now, see what people have got to say. Um, okay. Sorry, look. Yeah, some people saying they yeah well, well, while looking maybe maybe someone would, would say it's a bit dark i'm uh, yeah. just opposite the window so sorry guys for uh forward. picking the wrong yeah picking Please sorry for, you up. yeah yeah um i don't know someone's randomly saying happy birthday to me i don't understand what that's all about it's not my birthday very strange uh, a few people saying i need to turn my volume up a little bit um oh, one second let me just i don't know if i can't win with this <laughs> Um, I'm just going to ask everyone, can you hear me okay now? I just, uh, yeah, can, ev can everyone hear me? Does that volume help us all? Uh, Keith, you have to increase your mic volume still. Oh, well, it's never easy, is it? Right, it's, uh... Okay, how about that, guys? Can you hear me better now? Somebody type something. <laughs> Right, okay, I'm assuming that's works. Right, so let's get to some of these questions then. So, yes, that's a bit better. Right, okay. So, um, anyone got any questions? Refrician, come on. Well, so we'll wait for some questions to come through. Ah. How broad will the subject for study be, or does it depend on the partner college slash university? Yeah, every every partner providing uh, uh, education, whether formal credit institution or, for example, through platforms such as Udemy, uh, Udacity, edX, Coursera. You mentioned Bit Degree. Bit Degree are just providers of online courses, so every provider of education will be able to benefit from uh, basically uh, validating and authenticating, authenticating the degrees and diplomas and badges that. Uh, uh, they are issuing through OS University. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we are absolutely uh, vendor neutral and I would say industry neutral because all things learning would be able to benefit from our services. Okay, excellent. Uh, so, someone's got a good question here. Catching the Gales asking, uh, will you be including government security clearances? Uh, uh, by government, uh, uh, by government security. Uh, can you repeat the question? So, yeah. Well, so uh, by securities, do, do we mean uh, like uh, financial instruments or? Uh, no. So, like, uh, you know, if someone needs a CRB check, for example, to work on a, you know, work in a particular 
uh, work, work work within government or the need to you know, yeah, secure yeah, yeah, yeah. hospitals? Uh, absolutely. So it, it is up to the learner to decide what kind of credentials uh, he or she is going to log into their credentials passport. It can even be previous uh, job, uh, uh, you know, descriptions because. Uh, currently, it's not only a problem of what you have accomplished in terms of education, but what you have done for a former employer, right? Uh, and by the way, there is a biased incentive when you write your CV or when you publish something online. Be as precise as possible. Don't put anything additional. You know, try to conclude in two sentences that, hey, there are, for example, five page uh, job overviews that will show and will give quite a lot of useful insights to your next employer based on your previous experience. So the idea is that if you lock your basically job description and this is authenticated by the employer in your credentials wallet, then you would uh, have quite significant useful insights to share ahead. It can come from a governmental source, it can come from a private entity, but you definitely be able to put this into your um, uh, in, into your credentials wallet. Uh, finally, yet importantly, companies will also be able to have credentials wallet. For example, we are right now nominated for a best blockchain startup of the year by the uh, European uh, Blockchain Expo. And if we win the award, I would happily request an authentication of this award into our company's credentials wallet that we will get on our platform. So it is really a huge opportunity out there for every party to benefit from the service that we provide through the distributed blockchain. Okay, fantastic. All right, next up, I've got a question from Paul at Sit On My Bits. He's asking, will there be a big amount of uh, different courses available from the start, or will it take time for these courses to be listed? So obviously, you said that you'll be looking at getting lots of uh, different ones. What's what's the, yeah. Yeah, uh, it, can, it, it can happen through an integration, so it can take a lot of time for, I would say, 20,000 universities worldwide to be on board, but Again, if your university or if your company is not on board on our project, you can uh, register your learning with this uh, co company or institution, and then you can request for authentication of your learning, basically for this university. The incentive for this university to basically buy in your uh, authentication request is that if it, they do it, do it once to us university, they will no longer in the future need to do it twice. It's as simple as that. So we would be expecting huge mass adoption as soon as we deploy on the Ethereum blockchain, which after the release of our alpha on GitHub would happen in the upcoming weeks. So we are very bullish on, on the mass adoption. As I said, through a single MOOC provider, we can onboard millions of learners in, in a fraction of you know minutes. When is the alpha coming out? You said in a few weeks. Um, yeah, the, the, the alpha release is already available for developers to install uh, privately and uh, deploy, uh, uh, for, uh, but we are working on the user interface. What we received as a feedback based on our basically uh, GitHub uh, source code is that what we have as a user interface uh, uh, right now, as of, as of June 25th, is, uh, is uh, not that intuitive. So we are right now improving our uh, interface and, uh, you know, the moment our designers are ready, we will uh, also deploy it uh, so that people can interact easily. Uh, a huge problem, if you look into the uh, blockchain world, is with the quality of the dApps. So the dApps are made if uh, only programmers will use them and, uh, you know, it's not how it works. Blockchain, the technology behind it, this smart ledger, this distributed database should not affect uh, the user experience should not harm or break the user experience and the, the user journey through uh, from you know uh, getting on the user to completing uh, the value proposition that is basically out there. So we are improving this particular, uh, uh, I would say, aspect of, of the development. And as soon as we have it, uh, you will be able to to log and uh, access OS University deployed on the public uh, Ethereum blockchain on the mainnet. Okay, all right. Let's just uh, see what else we've got. Um... Will prospective employers have to buy tokens to see people's profiles? Not necessarily. Uh, prospective uh, employers uh, would, if uh, interested, be able to use our system uh, not only as a, a method to uh, run background checks uh, for potential employees, they would also be able to use it as an instrument to assign learning to current employees and basically do corporate development by finding quality educational experiences as 
signing them to the learners into their credentials passports and then tracking the completion. And finally, yet importantly, they would be able to use our EDU tokens as an incentive mechanism. On the principle of learning is learning, the more you complete on time and, uh, of course, with the quality that is uh, sufficient, the better reward you will receive for just a, a job or an employee benefit. And this benefit will come in the form of EDU tokens. So the EDU tokens, then you'll be able to basically reinvest again in learning. It's a great concept, but only if you want to use this concept for incentivization of of your employees, you would uh, need uh, tokens. Otherwise, the only thing that you do is, for example, if you want to, uh, I would say, hire someone by looking into his credentials passport, then you need a handshake on his side or her side. And then for the transaction of data to occur between the two basically users, the corporate and the, and the learner and the employee, you need uh, to, to run the transaction on, on the network. So you need to pay the small guest price for this transaction. This is the only thing that is uh, being, I would say, uh, paid for. Okay. Well, right, what we got next? Um, so, yeah, thanks for that question, Ruth. Uh, yeah, well, Ruth also asking, um, what, well, I actually got a question from Slane, 20, uh, 2010 first. Uh, what inspired you to create the project in the first place? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, something that inspired me, you know, I, I read some of the comments before uh, before the, the live hit and there was a comment, ah, this project sounds or seems good, but it's a bit boring. And I would say I, there is nothing on the world that I can, you know, uh, agree less. Uh, what inspired me is the opportunity to empower millions, uh, if not hundreds of millions of learners that are currently excluded from uh, the educational world and then from employment. Uh, especially in the developing nations, uh, because of the classical institutional system that is currently not fit to their needs. So uh, only in the United States, I'm, I'm now using a, a, an example with a, a well-developed educational system, there are more than 30 million uh, learners, uh, uh, higher education uh, uh, undergraduates or graduate degrees that have cut short uh, from uh, basically stop short from acquiring a degree. So they have some uh, university learning, but no degree. And the reason, because, you know, sometimes you basically default on your uh, student uh, debt. Sometimes you just need to get into uh, employment. So you don't have time for, you know, the, the full course. Uh, another time something personal happens. But whatever it is, 30 million uh, learners only in the U.S. have uh, uh, basically stopped at some point in their university studies. If you look into the developing world, well, literally there are hundreds of millions of people who cannot afford actually to access this higher education. So the vision that inspired me is a vision where you can crowdsource your education from, uh, from different sources, not necessarily alternative. They can be uh, classical university sources. There are great uh, quality co courses coming from Ivy League universities to platforms such as Coursera and edX, but you will have a system to validate and authenticate your learning outcomes, your learning accomplishments. So this system is always university. My inspiration is you can do it now. You can access online learning for free, but then nobody really trusts what you have accomplished. And then they say, okay, you completed this here and this there, but you know, you're not a, a university graduate. And in the future, you will not necessarily need to be. Many people, hundreds of millions who cannot afford, will be able to use OIS University to have a tailored, adopted learning path, to follow this path, and upon completion of this path, actually get hired uh, and uh, you know create a whole new world of opportunities for them. This is the future of uh, education we foresee. It's ultra exciting because it's empowering hundreds of millions of learners throughout the world. And as I said, I cannot agree uh, stronger that uh, I would say it's a good project, but boring. Maybe I'm boring because I'm a doctoral researcher, but definitely this is the most exciting thing that I can think of. And I'm very happy that we have just the right technology at the right time to implement this vision. Because it's a vision that exists for, for, for quite some years, uh, but you, you have never had such a, I would say, smart distributed ledger, which can create the trust in such a, uh, you know, uh, industry without the need for a middleman, an institution or whomever else to go through and uh, for this institution or other form of middleman to accreditate uh, uh, your accomplishment. So now we just remove this need and it's quite exciting to change. Okay. Um, I've got another question from Ruth. She's asking, why did you choose Ethereum? I'm going to add to that um, and to sort of ask whether you considered other 
blockchains. Yeah. But yeah. I'm also yeah. going to ask, would, is what you're doing, would it have been possible even without blockchain? You know, that, that's... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, so basically, it's uh, a follow-up on uh, the, the last thing I said, that uh, we started the research, I would say, uh, technology neutral. So my, my, my thesis that I... It, because it's a spin-off research project, right? So we started as a as a, a university concept that we want to either prove or uh, uh, reject. Um, we started without thinking necessarily for, for blockchain uh, for as a solution, but the research showed that this is the only such open source, of course, technology that uh, can uh, have the not only the networking effect, but also the spillover effect. So the, uh, if, you, if you use blockchain, uh, you not necessarily need to get into these complex partnerships that actually can be built, but uh, of course with the, I suppose, multi, with hundreds of millions and, you know, it will be a, a multi-year project to create such a system, you know, a system for tracking learning, a global system, let's say a project used by the United Nations or something. So you need, you need uh, billions of dollars, you need tens of years to create such an open standard that can actually deliver the same value for, for the learner or for the job candidate or for the employee, such as OS University. So without the blockchain, this is simply not, uh, not achievable in the, in the foreseeable future. And with blockchain, we can, we can do it, not with the Ethereum blockchain. We can do it with every blockchain. So every university actually in Malta, they are building national database for diplomas using blockchain. They started building it after we published our three years research. So it's great validation. It's not, they're not partnering with us around building this private diploma, but it's a great validation of our project. So in Malta, they're doing it. Uh, in, in different universities, they're doing it. MIT is doing it. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are very, very bullish on uh, achieving this together, but not necessarily through, through Ethereum. Ethereum, we use to deploy our distributed application, but this distributed application will be able to then feed your data through other blockchains, whether public or private, as long as we can achieve an API. The idea is that here is not like with cryptocurrencies, because with cryptocurrency, it's, of course, there are many projects looking into this opportunity, but they're not there yet. You cannot simply, you know, uh, today uh, be, be uh, using Bitcoin and then uh, go to switch to Zcash. Uh, but here it's not a problem. Here, for example, we have been speaking to representatives of um, uh, the, the Ant Financial, which is the uh, Alipay FinTech arm. They are having very, very good private blockchain uh, Ant Financial. I, I mean, I'm not uh, doing a tutorial, but uh, in London, as part of London Tech Week, we had a meeting with them and I was very impressed with what they had achieved. So quite easily we can partner with Dan Financial on Chinese market. Chinese universities can uh, use uh, private uh, permission uh, deployment of, of this or other, for example, I don't know, Neo4 Enterprise or whatever. They can use it for, for their learners and then through API and uh, of course feeding the data in, in our DApp, we would quite easily be able to achieve uh, what we want to achieve and exactly this is the data to be available into the personal credentials passport no matter if it's coming from another uh, blockchain uh, application somewhere else deployed publicly or privately so we are i'm a fan of ethereum our programmers are solidity developers uh, we are basically you know uh, into the project quite heavily but this does not mean that uh, we want to lock in our uh, users uh, sticking to this particular uh, technology so I've got a quick question. Um, just just thinking about what you were talking. Uh, how big is this? Um, how how big is this market? So that, that, that you're tackling. How many people, on average, worldwide? I mean, I don't know if you've got this data to hand. Um, are in further education? Because you know, oh, forty eight million yeah. tokens is the number of tokens you're you're, yeah. you're generating. It seems quite a low amount for such a large uh, a large market. Yeah, you are absolutely right. So our token, as I said, is, uh, I would say, uh, a vehicle for the platform, but it's not, that's the point. It's not, we're not limited to, to the EDU token. The idea is to be limited in order to, uh, I would say, create interest towards being among the ones who are the users and early adopters of the technology and benefit from, from having this token. But given the amount of the market, it's a, uh, you, you can, can check our pitch deck, you know, just go to us.university.com 
the page deck is literally linked you know yeah. uh, at the center of the page so we have a very good chart we're in the middle of three different markets so on the one part of the chart we have uh, the, the the not only further education the educational uh, online education market then of course offline education only on the online education is more than 200 billion uh, dollar market then we have the recruitment industry with all the companies providing different services such as uh, headhunting then background checks which is also more than 200 billion uh, and then we have, uh, I would say, on this chart, you know, just guys check it out. On the bottom, we have corporate learning and development. Because if you remember, I said that EDU can totally be used as an incentive mechanism to develop your learners, your employees further in corporate development. So this is also a multi billion market. We are at the center because yeah. the credentials passport we provide and the services around it actually serve all the three different markets. And if you try to address this need, with 48 million EU, then this is nonsense. That's why we we have uh, we are starting with um, uh, Ethereum, then Bitcoin, and then fiat currencies, and then potentially other cryptocurrencies. Therefore, my call to action to providers of uh, blockchain technologies, you know, from Monero to Zcash to to whatever, is to let's partner together. Let's make uh, so that the users of these cryptocurrencies would be able to pay for high quality educational services at OS University using these, uh, these cryptocurrencies. And let's do these uh, integrations together. We are absolutely open. Uh, we are strongly, um, I would say, uh, evangelizing the use of EDU, but we know that EDU is not enough to, to uh, satisfy the need. So, and uh, just another thing, uh, you mentioned that, um, obviously you said you, uh, you published a paper on, on this, uh, and uh, another university has, has um, started to use your ideas to uh, put diplomas on a blockchain. Yeah. So, did they not talk to you at all? Did they not say, hey, guys, fancy fun? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, we were talking. So uh, uh, we are talking, but uh, we are also uh, giving always um, when, of course, it is due uh, the credits. So I, I would say that uh, University of Nicosia in Cyprus was the first to start to hash data about their learners degrees in 2015 on the bitcoin blockchain then a couple of different universities one college in argentina uh all, all open university which i'm a great fan of and i'm inspired as our os university brand is inspired by uh what uh michael young created in the 60s with open university we're doing the next iteration i would say by basically deploying uh a uh type of a university register on the blockchain Global one, uh, so it's it's you know uh, the previous concept, but now in, in uh, con concepted and designed for the future. Uh, they're also working in that direction. Professor uh, uh, John Dominic from 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 uh, Open University in MIT. The guys are working with a software company doing something that is you know private, and they're selling it from uh, company to company. But we, we are the only ones to create. A open distributed application and think of the, thinking of the learner at the center, create the competence passport as the actual product. We're not selling it this as a uh, software as a service to companies. We're selling it to the crypto community because, uh, I mean, selling, you know, because we are literally providing it as a, a free of charge service. And the only charge that there is is related to the limitations of the, the, the blockchain as such. And uh, yeah, uh, we are speaking. We have uh, actually, right now we are ending our uh, research month. As part of this research month, I spent the last six months in the UK. We did an acceleration program financed by the European Commission with a local counterpart. I was meeting with universities literally every day, of course, with corporate partners as well and uh, you know members of the community. But in Bulgaria, where our software team is based, and today I'm in Bulgaria to take part tomorrow in a conference in another university. They're organizing Sofia Business uh, School Week, and I will be speaking on blockchain education with other uh, representatives of academia. So we are develop we're developing connections. Maybe they're creating something that we are not partnering in terms of software development, you know, together. But this is actually good because we are looking into their developments. And we are basically doing peer reviews and they're looking into ours and we're building and uh, I would say improving together while sticking to the uniqueness of our, I would say, value proposition. Awesome. All right. Um, the next question then. Uh, let's have a look. Somebody, uh, I was looking at companies, uh, I was looking at the companies that recognize your project, wanted to know 
Uh, how do they recognize you and how is that relevant to the project? Um, if I understand the project correctly, it is about our partners. Yes. So uh, if, if, if you want to check out how we work with the partners that are listed on, on the footer of our website in the partner section, then again, the pitch deck is the best place because we have a couple of slides where we explain what, what uh, use case for OS University D app they're using when we started working with them and where are we going with this partnership. For example, we have a certain partnership with the job marketplace, the company in the field of HR. We have another type of partnership with some of our early adopters uh, universities, accredited universities. And we have a third type of partnership with the providers of massive open online learning. So everything, every partner is unique but you can check out details in our uh, pitch deck and also, of course, go to our Medium blog and check them out. There is another, I would say, area on the website, which is with companies, big brands that have already recognized the, uh, the project. So, for example, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, I'm a former employee of Hewlett Packard Enterprise, they have recognized us. And one may say, how, you know, are they partnering? No, Hewlett Packard Enterprise is uh, it's a huge, uh, you know, leader in the industry, but we are not partnering with them. They have recognized us by taking part in an initiative of theirs and being rewarded for our development and for our ideas. So, for example, with them, we were nominated to be among top 10 social innovation ideas back in 2016. So literally on the, on the level, on the stage of just conceptualizing what our project will be, they awarded us among top 10 social innovation ideas in competition with more than 400 companies worldwide. And there are, of course, projects for social change. Uh, and again, there are different partners that are uh, listed there. Erspen Young in Latvia, we want a hackathon. Uh, ISEC, which is the biggest student-led organization worldwide, we did a pilot with them in Brazil. Uh, you know, you name it, there are at least 10 different uh, brands that have so far recognized us. The European Commission through this acceleration program that I just completed in London with our partners. And I'm very excited because so far the, the feedback has always been quite positive. That this is why I'm very, you know, uh, bullish about our project. Fantastic! And you've um, you won an uh, when you um, didn't you win an award as well? You mentioned it's on your website. For, um, um, yeah, we, we are actually nominated, and uh, uh, if someone is watching from Netherlands, Amsterdam, or is just going to the uh, European Blockchain Expo, which is happening uh, on the twenty seventh yep. this month. In two days' time, so go and speak with uh, my co-founders uh, Jordan and Romchu. They will be on stand forty-seven, and actually they will be speaking on stage. So um, yeah, go check them out, meet them, and the award ceremony will be happening there. So we were, I would say, uh, humbled and honored to be uh, shortlisted, nominated for this Blockchain for Social Good Award because the selection committee uh, uh, consisted of members of the European Parliament leaders of the blockchain and the IT industry are at, at large, you know, companies like IBM and others. So they shortlisted us for this award. We are, we would be very happy to just be shortlisted, but if we win the award, hey, why not? We were among the top three projects uh, in Bulgaria on a local level, uh, not in the blockchain space, but generally top three among uh, young entrepreneurs. So we are a team of uh, educational and academic and software advocates. Uh, I would say around uh, our 30s with more senior advisors to compensate for uh, for our age in the 30s. But uh, yeah, uh, so on a local level, we won this uh, nomination for one of the top three companies uh, uh, led by young entrepreneurs in Bulgaria operating in the IT world. Again, very humble to be, to be recognized. But at the end of the day, the only award that will matter is when we are live in a few days' uh, uh, time. Uh, uh, on, on the mainnet and people start uh, validating and authenticating their credentials, start finding jobs easier, smarter jobs, better jobs, start looking into smarter, better learning opportunities, using the data for what they accomplished to basically have a next iteration because we also have such a mechanism and literally deliver the value that we promise to the end learner. If someone goes and says, hey guys, thank, thanks to OS University, I found a job, or thanks to OS University, I was, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I graduated the great university, which I found through your platform, and they checked my credentials and I applied and I was accepted and now I have a great, you know, 
path ahead of me. This would be the only award that would matter for, for me in the long run, I would say. Yeah, I can really see you're passionate about it, man. It's really good. Awesome. Okay, uh, next question. We've got a question from Reese. He's asking. Uh, he heard that London Tech Week went very well. Uh, are there any future plans in development for any big partnerships? Yeah. Uh, so the London Tech Week, uh, actually, what London Tech Week was a few weeks back, and last week I was at the Lon London App Tech Week. Every week in London is <laughs> London something we eat, right? So uh, we we can, I cannot speak for I would say uh, partnerships that we have not a uh, formal memorandum of understanding to announce, because you know it was just a few days time. But uh, we will announce one big great partnership with a company operating in the blockchain world tomorrow or the day after on our Medium uh, blog. And then we are right now in discussions with a company that is leader in the educational space in, in Asia and uh, have uh, uh, millions, literally millions of, of learners uh, uh, leveraging its services. So all of them would in very short time be able to benefit from our credentials passport and have their uh, certificates and diplomas uh, um, uh, authenticated on the blockchain thanks to us university in in the really foreseeable short uh, uh, future ahead of the project so again just tune in next week on medium we will be announcing this as well and uh, that's why i'm excited every day actually after our call maybe someone will get into a discussion with me we are open to early adopters not only from the educational world but if you are a representative of a company and you want to use os university's credentials wallet into your company and deploy it you know, uh, speak with me. Uh, if you want to evangelize the project into your local community of uh, crypto enthusiasts, again, speak with us. Uh, literally every day, uh, the best partnerships thus far are happening like this, you know. Without us doing the outreach by people understanding about us and saying what you're doing is transformative, and I want to be among the ones who are doing the transformation at the very early stage. So. This is how, how it works these days. And uh, you mentioned earlier you um, you have quite a lot of respect for the Open University. Yeah, um, yeah. Are, they, are you on their radar in any way? Yeah, I would say because I, I spoke, uh, recently I was invited to uh, be among the companies that took part in a short incubation program called Innovation Boost, organized by Teach First, which is the biggest organization in the UK helping uh, teachers uh, or other people become teachers in schools and improve the quality of education. So as part of this, uh, you know, week incubation program, uh, I met with representatives of the uh, Young Foundation. And for those that you are not aware, the Young Foundation is actually behind those university. Michael Young is the founder, or I would say the, the thinker behind the project. And we are looking forward to, to working together. As I said, literally the day we close a partnership, we announce it. So. The day we close this partnership, I will be ultra happy. Uh, a month ago, we closed the partnership uh, for us to become part of the fifth cohort of ad tech startups uh, 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 in the incubator of UCL, University College London. University College London are the leaders in these studies, in the educational studies for five consecutive years. Just for reference, Harvard are ranked second and, and then MIT. So. UCL are the leaders worldwide. They invited us, and after, of course, a, a thorough, uh, you know, uh, process, application process, to join the fifth cohort of uh, London change making uh, at tech companies. And we are now the only blockchain startup that is working with UCL as part of Educate London and their partners to, uh, you know, deliver on our promise and change the game for for quite a lot of folks out there throughout the world. And I'm very happy, you know, so. We are, we are, again, we are not exclusive. We are, I mean, UCL, I'm a big fan uh, of them, obviously, now. And prior to that, because they're leaders in what they do, but we are open to partnerships with every uh, university that is out there. We have discussions with a Canadian uh, company that is behind the, the, the biggest, I would say, uh, network of private universities that is uh, operating on the local market there. But the fact that we don't have, uh, for example, such partnerships in 180 countries around the world is because we are simply just 20 to 30 people and we have an ambassadorship program that will help us get there. So we, we need an ambassador in 180 countries, not one, we need 10 ambassadors uh, around the world and we need fast onboarding because the faster we do the onboarding of new institutions, the more learners can benefit from uh, 
indisputable credentials uh, as of now, not like in, in 10 years time. And again, it is an open space, an open platform. It is not a money-making machine. Potentially, if you decide to, to back us and support our crowdfunding campaign, it may be for you, but we are doing it for the bigger picture. So we are not here for the money. Okay, fantastic. Um, actually, that, that's reflected actually quite a lot in your um, token distribution because your um, is it seventy two and a half percent is actually for crowdfunding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of yeah, a lot exactly. of a lot of people that uh, might say they're not in it for the money. Uh, yeah, yeah, they they only have like forty percent in the crowd sale or or fifty percent. So yeah, that's that's uh, yeah, it's nice to see that. It's a, it's, yeah. it's a change to see that actually. And 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 if we go further, you will see that. The other part, big part, of course, we need uh, a sufficient backing to do the development. But we have been doing the development and we have been doing the research for quite a lot of time prior to our crowd sales. So definitely we don't look at it as a, you know, a, a land of last resort for, for this project, a uh, so source of uh, you know, uh, salvation or anything. But if you look at the other 30% apart from what we, uh, we share with the community on the crowd sale, they also come with the goal for incentivizing partners. So uh, we would also, as I said, as part of this fund, distribute tokens to uh, 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 providers of learning in developing nations to then further distribute small amounts to learners so that they can use the credentials passport and its full functionality without, without you know, saying, hey, but you know, you need to buy uh, 10 meters and uh, potentially buy two mass. Uh, the idea here is different. Uh, we are very happy uh, if you own our new token, but if you if you don't, that's fine. We have plenty of opportunities how to supply you the core value proposition of our platform without evangelizing you in the crypto world, in which I truly believe. Awesome. All right, moving on to the uh, last couple of questions now because we're getting uh, getting up to an hour now. Um, yeah, loads of people saying don't list on Bancor. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, don't list on Bancor. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Uh, right, um, let's have a look. Uh, Slane's asking, will tokens be locked until launch day to stop people dumping on, on IDEX? Yes, yes, yes. So tokens are uh, locked. Uh, a launch day is soon uh, coming. And of course, there is an additional locking for the, the founders. Obviously, again, <laughs> we, we are academicians and software developers. But of course, we also have put security, uh, security trust mechanisms to ensure people that uh, we are in this project for the long run and uh, we are not close to you know dumping anything uh, uh, at any point in time. Okay. Um, oh, so someone's actually asking here. Post ICO, will you be looking um, at uh, looking at ex uh, an exchange like Bancor? This explains all the Bancor questions uh, to ensure uh, the token uh, liquidity. We have people uh, like a, a full dedicated resource that is doing the, the partnerships. So, uh, you know, uh, we so far have announced the listing uh, on exchanges because we, we want to provide also an option. We are a utility token. We offer a great utility for holders of our token. But if someone wants to quickly, uh, uh, you know, uh, liquidate uh, his or her assets, it's, it's, it's up to the owner of DBU tokens to, to do what they want. So we have formal partners and for partners in the making, I would say that I'm not the right person to speak, but I would definitely have in, in mind the feedback from the community. Okay, sorry about smiling there. So <laughs> Chin Wang has just put a hilarious mm -hmm. comment that's ch tickled me, uh, saying, no, are you right. planning on having a Superman course originally priced at $99, but only for $99, oh, only for $9.99. Come on, leave it out. Yeah. Um, right. Um, I, I wrote I wrote the book on blockchain education. And I haven't wrote the book on uh, uh, crypto in education. So <laughs> I would ask, you know, I would contact the, whomever wrote the comment, and maybe I will have more on this interesting <laughs> insight and share more of it with. Um, so uh, another question here, or more of a statement. Um, someone saying that. Um, Oh, so, yeah, sorry, so I'm just looking at the top here. Catching the Gale is asking, uh, will you be including, um, I don't know what these are, comp TIA certs for technological companies? We, we will be working with uh, technological companies to provide the value that they need from us. So we would have integrations. 
providing further, I would say, customized value on top of the, the distributed application. I'm not sure about this use case, but if someone is interested and is interested in terms of leveraging such a functionality, then, you know, write me at christian.daskalov at OS University or just contact me on LinkedIn and I'll be happy to discuss it. Okay, cool. Uh, so someone's saying here, it's estimated that by 2025, 15% of all universities and colleges will shut. Uh, due to online learning, therefore, they imagine there will be a lot of competition. Is that a, is that a true stat? Is that a... Uh, uh, actually, uh, Deloitte have statistics that uh, more than twenty percent of um, uh, education will switch from classical alternative to online uh, as of twenty twenty three. And actually, uh, a lot of other, I would say, offerings would be blended. So you know, some sort of. Uh, uh, interaction in person, some for the, uh, of course this is happening right now, but as I said, we are here for providing the value for both online learning and offline learning. So whatever learning you're providing, you'll be able to boost the credibility, the traceability, the immutability of the learning outcomes through OS University. And therefore we are, you know, very uh, confident that whatever change on the market is, is uh, upcoming, we are ready to embrace it. Fantastic. Uh, right, let's see if we can get uh, get through the last of the few questions then. Um, would this actually create competition for those online universities or would it take the burden off of those universities developing and maintaining their own software? Uh, we'll create competition because uh, <clears throat> if you are among the universities who provide degrees that are authenticated on the blockchain to us, you University and the other universities providing degrees that are not authenticatable and traceable uh, uh, for learners and for employers, then you have a problem. And then you need to, you know, switch to basically us as a provider of a credentials passport. Uh, and of course, if someone wants to compete, bring your competition on. Uh, let's see, let's see where the future takes us. But we are providing an open platform, so it's very hard to complete uh, compete with that. There are companies trying to provide similar value, uh, like going door to door, knocking to universities. Hey, do you want me to sell you a license to use this blockchain credentialing mm -hmm. software for $100,000 per year? Well, some universities are actually saying yes, and I know about a couple of them, but when we have the open platform free of charge for learners to use, then your university will have a problem if uh, he's not uh, uh, you know, uh, leveraging uh, this uh, utility that we offer to its learners. Wow, yeah, so that's kind of blows, uh, blows everyone out of the water, really. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Um, <laughs> but you're a popular guy. <laughs> right, so... Yeah. <laughs> all right, so... Um, let's just have a look. Um, right. Um, buh, 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 buh. Are the qualifi or qualifications awarded universal? Would that well, that, de that would depend yeah. surely on yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly on who, whomever is uh, awarding the qualification. It's not we we are not we are not awarding qualification. We are making sure it's authentic and we are making sure it's uh, it, it can reach uh, whomever is there to be reached an employer, another university, or another learner with whom you want to share your. Uh, learning achievements and accomplishments and professional by the way we are skipping the, the topic but obviously people are interested in the education of our well prof the professional i would say validation of, of accomplishments is also important okay brilliant uh, i've got one last question here then um it's just from graham asking how did your london chat with cardano go anything interesting from your uh, google <laughs> london visit uh, so Graham, uh, he he's I suppose is the Graham. We have we really have a, a great guy in the community up on Telegram. We have more than fifty thousand people in our Telegram group, and I love to have chats with the community. So uh, recently, I shared with a picture. I, I was uh, invited on the first Dutch meetup that Cardano organized. Actually, they have organized previously other events, but this is part of a big new thing that they're doing. And uh, yeah, I was happy to have a shirt that they gave me and I'm wearing. As I said, you know, the more shirts, the better. <laughs> the more shirts from, coming from blockchain providers wanting to do business with those universities, the better. But uh, yeah, Cardano are great guys. And um, I, I really like the fact that they have academic background the same way our project has, because we are all for about sharing. We share our results, we share our progress. We want peer review, we want critical review, we want software criticizing our alpha release. We want learners criticizing the fact that we're not bringing enough value. We're actually doing this with UCL. UCL are helping us through this incubation program improve our value proposition for the end learner and create real change. So uh, yeah, uh, having the opportunity to 
just with Ferdinand, I'm very happy about what they do because we share a common vision for how this community should should go and it's you know openness, transparency, and responsibility towards uh, the the crypto community staying behind what you provide as a value and providing this value and sharing this knowledge and learning with the community so that they can build, build upon it. Fantastic. Right. Well, um, I've certainly learned a lot more about your project, uh, <laughs> and uh, it does it is something to be excited about. I have to agree. Um, now you've got a very short ICO, just one month long. Is that right? So you've only got yeah, a few more days yeah, left. Right. Yeah, uh, a few more days left. So we are uh, ending um, uh, the, the crypto crowdfunding campaign on, on July first. So whoever wants to take part, you know, do have in mind that uh, you can, of course, uh, uh, join at any point in time. The sooner the better, because we have, uh, I would say, modest but sufficient discounts to incentivize you to do it faster. Uh, but uh, again. Only after the ICO ends, we uh, continue with the focus uh, that we have been having for the past three years, which is building a great decentralized platform, providing great value to, to the learners. And we are very humbled by the support we have achieved and received so far. This has uh, tremendously helped us scale and will continue to help us in the future. Uh, for if the community is here for the long run and is here to stay and uh, support the implementation and the mass adoption of DDU, right? So, uh, you know, the ICO ends, but the, the story be, uh, continues yeah, the next yeah. chapter. Yeah. We open it on the next day. Yeah. And um, you actually, uh, when do you actually go live with your with your platform? That's actually very swift. It, isn't it? Yeah, it is it's on GitHub. So you can, uh, if you're a big company and you want to do credentialing, go and deploy it today. Mm -hmm. If wow. you're an end learner wanting to create a credentials passport and feed your data from different sources and authenticate it, then you need to wait a few more days, if not weeks, simply because the user interface that we are working on right now wants and needs to be perfect. You know, this is what was behind the Apple success, right? It's not the, the greatest technology invention that they created, but they took care about the details and so the details are you know here to, to i would say here to stay for the long run and we are working on this user interface details right now but if you're a big company go and deploy tomorrow and for um for potential people that are potentially thinking of investing um if they invested today when would they look to be able to realize that if they wanted to uh, sell it at an exchange what sort of timeline would they be looking at I, I uh, uh, really much uh, uh, enjoyed uh, the expertise you put in. Uh, of course, I, I would be happy if uh, whomever is joining from the AMA now watches the review that you did earlier. Sure. It was, of course, sponsored, but it was uh, authentic in, in sense that you had quite some good comments on what our short ends are or what our strengths and weaknesses are. So I really enjoyed it, and I, I think you made a very good Evaluation, I would say, as, um, type of uh, analysis, and uh, yeah. So this answers the question: If someone wants to invest, uh, you know, look at the, the foundations so on where the market and where it is now, and when it will be in the future. Uh, and of course, this is in the long, in the short run. In the long run, you'll be able to buy new tokens from these exchanges that were listed. Go to OS University slash either token sale or crowd sale, you know, just go to the homepage and check the exchanges that we have partnership with. And on July 2nd, you'll be able to buy new tokens from there if you are not able to- Oh, so July 2nd, that's soon. Right now. Yeah, 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 that, that's soon, yeah. Very swift, very swift indeed. Well, Christian, thank you very we, we, much. We've done, we've done our homework, so uh, thank you for, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, g giving us the opportunity to share what we have we have done so far. It's, it's amazing, I mean, we are we really thrilled to, to have chats with, uh, with the community and with uh, experts as you and this kind of project. It's fantastic. Well, look, I really appreciate the time you've given me today. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's certainly opened up my eyes as to um, how at the scale of the project. And uh, thanks very much to everyone that's participated in the AMA as well. So I'm going to leave it at that. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. And I will uh, speak to everybody soon. Take it easy.